Robo taxis are going to transform your life, change the way you travel, question car ownership and free up hours of wasted time every day. Yet most people have never heard of them. What are robo taxis? Hi, I'm Dave. This is World of Peace. Thank you for watching our video. So what are robo taxis? Well, they're just taxis with no human driver. They're fully automated self-driving taxis. They also don't yet exist at least not in any numbers and certainly not commercially. So what's the big deal? Well, let's go back to basics. We need to travel. Work is never right on your doorstep. Supermarkets are just too far away if you're loaded with heavy bags. Schools are often beyond easy walking distance and holidays by definition involve traveling great distances. We travel. We don't really have a choice, but we can choose how we travel. Many of us will choose public transport trains for longer distances, regular commutes, buses and underground for shorter trips. While there's no capital expense, they're not exactly cheap and they can only go on set routes at set times dictated by others. They're not flexible. For most of us, we choose a car for some or all of our transport. They are highly convenient. You can go wherever you want, whenever you want. They're also expensive. For buyers, the average price of a new car is around £30,000. And the latest estimates put the average cost of ownership at around £1 per mile driven. Now that sounds a lot, but look at a typical driver. He'll pay maybe two, two and a half thousand a year. That's just a hundred or two hundred pound a month on the loan or the lease. He'll pay several hundred or even several thousand pound on car insurance. And doing 8,000 mile a year at 30 to the gallon, he will spend well over £2,300 a year on petrol or diesel. <clears throat> that soon adds up if you then include some road tax, servicing, repairs, tyres, brake shoes. The figure of £8,000 a year, uh, year for 8,000 miles or a pound a mile no longer looks so silly. And then what do we do with our car when we're not driving it? Well, we park it. For over 75% of each and every day, our huge investment is parked, not being used. And ironically, some of us even pay to park the car and still not use it. For some journeys, we could use cars in the form of taxis, black cabs, Uber, Lyft and the like. Much more convenient, no capital expense, no worries about fuel, servicing, parking. But they're even dearer. They typically cost up to £5 a mile in London for the first mile, £3 a mile elsewhere and up to £2 a mile after that, making it between two and five times the price of running your own car. So taxis are not financially suitable as a replacement for a car for all your motoring needs for the whole year. And we're running out of options. Or are we? Robo taxis might just give us a new unexpected option. Technology companies are spending billions of pounds developing full self-driving autonomous level five cars. Companies like Apple, Google, Tesla, Waymo, plus dozens of traditional manufacturers like Ford, General Motors, Fiat, Renault, Mercedes. Everybody is trying to develop full self-driving. Now their initial aim is to make a fortune selling their systems in new electric cars. This will give them a huge competitive advantage, meaning they sell more. Now, additionally, a huge number of deaths, injuries and property damage occur millions of times a day around the world. It's estimated over a million people die worldwide on the roads every year. It's also estimated that 80% of all accidents are caused by human drivers. We drive occasionally through a red light if we're in a rush. We lose our concentration when we turn around to shout at the children. We fail to see that motorcyclist. We overestimate our driving skills in the wet and snow. We underestimate the speed of the approaching car when we pull out to overtake. So they will sell their full self-driving cars as being safer, meaning they'll sell more. Because it's new, they'll charge more as well. So the first stage is to get full self-driving working and nobody has yet succeeded. There are systems already available on today's cars, but they're not self-driving, merely driving aids. Things like adaptive cruise control, automatic lane keeping, automatic parking. They all still legally need a driver in the car. They need him to switch it on and off and to take over if it fails. Most also monitor the driver, make sure they're staying alert, watching the road 
and most of them require you to keep your hands on the steering wheel just in case you need to take over. Some cars on the road today do not need a driver but are still not classed as full self-driving. They work by having set routes which have been thoroughly pre-surveyed down to just millimetres using radar, lidar, ultrasonics, GPS, sat-nav and cameras. These digital maps that are produced are then stored on board and the car can follow any of these set routes. They cannot travel even one inch off the pre-mapped routes and there are very, very few available routes. Even those need to be remapped every single time a change is made to the route. Even something as small as resurfacing, moving a set of traffic lights from low down to overhead, or making a street one way, or adding a bus stop. Think of these like the driverless Docklands Light Railway in London's Canary Wharf. No driver, but only a very limited set route to follow along rails. Many cities legally require a standby driver to sit there just in case, even though they don't actually need one. These are simpler systems, but they're not classed as full self-driving. If the passenger has to go to a place not, not yet pre-mapped, they cannot. If the car on a set route goes around a bend and finds a sign saying no entry, road ahead flooded, follow diversion, the car cannot, unless that entire diversion has also been pre-surveyed. And the maps already stored on board include that data. Now one company, Tesla, has taken a radically different approach. They notice that we happily drive using just two eyes and one brain. Well, most of us. So they use multiple cameras and an AI artificial intelligence. If they can get it working, this approach will allow a Tesla car to be anywhere in the, in the world and it would instantly work out where it was by GPS, see where the road is, know which side of the road to drive on, know local laws, see the speed limit signs, allow the passenger to select any destination anywhere he wants, then work out the best route to get to the chosen destination and just get you there. And if it needed to divert, just would. Time will tell which is right or which is first. In this race, winner really does take it all. But self-driving will happen. Maybe this year, maybe 10 years. I'll be re releasing another video shortly going into much greater details about these competing approaches, successes and failures. I'll leave a link at the end. And when they exist, will they be perfect? Have zero accidents? No, don't be silly. There will always be accidents. You may be driving along 70 mile now and a tyre blows out. There's nothing you or anyone can do about that. You could hit the brakes to avoid a dog and the driver behind runs into you. A pedestrian could step out into the road directly in front of you. A cyclist could suddenly wobble and swerve across the road. Now, they will still have accidents. Can your full self-driving car make mistakes? Well, of course. But so do you. Remember, we already have over a million deaths a year on the road and full self-driving doesn't yet exist. Nothing is perfect, not even you. You're not going to get rid of all accidents, but you can get rid of up to 80% of them. And that is simply huge. Now, there are those of you who will say, I'll never let the car drive. I just don't trust it. Besides, I'm a much better driver. Think of your car insurance. In the UK, we just passed a law that says if the car is self-driving, you, the owner or passenger, cannot possibly be responsible if the car crashes. Absolutely obvious. Self-driving cars in the UK must be insured by the supplier, be that the motor manufacturer or the software developer. So no insurance to pay for is included in the price of the car. Neat. Now guess what happens if you still insist on driving yourself? Obviously, you'll have to pay for your own insurance. Now guess how much they will charge if all the sensible drivers are letting the cars do the driving safely, leaving you four or five times more likely to crash. It will not be cheap. So besides full self-driving being the must-have accessory of the future, money is probably going to force people to buy cars fitted with it and then use it. Once they've tried it and accepted that it can drive quickly and safely, they'll soon get to love that you can sit in the back playing computer games, reading, watching TV, even sleeping, while your car takes you to your destination safely. Well, so far we've just looked at the benefits of owning a self-driving car. Cheaper, safer, less hassle. You can play computer, watch TV, read a book, or work while your car takes you to your destination. 
But what else could your own full self-driving car do? Well, let's take an example. You're going off on holiday. Your car can drive you to the airport, drop you off right in front of the terminal, and then drive home and park in your drive. It doesn't need you in the car for that. You fly off on holiday and then when you return, it will drive out, pick you up, take you home. No long stay parking charges. But let's get a bit more adventurous. Because if your car can take you to the airport and then drive home without you in the car, it could also drive somewhere else on the way home, pick up someone else and take them somewhere else while you're on holiday. And of course, charge them during the time it would otherwise have been parked in your drive doing nothing. So while you're on holiday, while you work, you're shopping, it can collect other people, take them to the airport, station, shops, pub, restaurant, drop them off, charge them for doing so. It can work while you're asleep, home or abroad, picking up people, dropping them off, charging them. Your self-driving car, when you're not using it yourself, can become a taxi earning you money and because there's no driver in it, it's called a robo-taxi. Now, the 75% of the time your car was doing nothing, sitting empty, idle, parked, it could start earning you an income. But how do you find customers? Well, Tesla has already said if it gets full self-driving working, it will, in the early days, offer all Tesla owners the option of using their existing cars as robo-taxis via an over-the-air upgrade, which Tesla will then run for them as an app on iPhones and Android smartphones, just like Uber and Lyft apps. You sit back, let Tesla do all the work, and just collect your share of the fares. Other companies, like Uber, will surely offer similar schemes. Oh, but taxis are dear, we've already said. So what's the big deal? Well, yeah, taxis are. But robo-taxis aren't. By far the largest proportion of the taxi fare that you pay is paying for the driver to drive you around. Next largest chunk is buying petrol or diesel at ever-increasing prices. Then another lump goes to pay for specialist taxi driver insurance. There's no need to tell you that if you have a car that can become a robo-taxi, you don't have to pay a driver to drive other people around. You also don't have to buy expensive petrol or diesel. Robo-taxis will be all electric cars. Electricity, particularly off-peak, is far, far cheaper than fossil fuel. You obviously don't need to buy insurance. It comes with the car. But here's the real difference between a taxi and a robo-taxi. The law only allows a taxi driver to drive a limited number of hours each day. For most of the day, he simply cannot use his taxi. He's eating, resting, sleeping, spending time with his family, shopping. His taxi sits there empty, depreciating and deteriorating him, costing him money not to use it, not earning. Now, Robotex Taxi has no such restriction. It can work 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. It can work three or four times longer than any human taxi driver could. Robotaxis should be much cheaper than taxis. They do not yet exist in any significant numbers. They are still running trials. But initial estimates put the cost of hiring a robotaxi at around 25 to 50 pence a mile. It's one quarter to half the price of using your own car. Now again, that's great if you own a self-driving car. You can earn your money. Let's say you don't. You will still hire a taxi at some point in your life. Everybody does. In fact, many of the companies developing robo-taxis are not even slightly interested in you owning one of their self-driving cars. They see robo-taxis purely as a business with a huge market and massive profit. Tesla has already announced they will build and run their own fleet of robo-taxis if they get full self-drive work working. Why sell a car and make a few thousand pound profit when you can run it yourself as a robo-taxi and make 10 or 20,000 every year for the next 10 years? Obviously, large car rental companies like Hertz, Avis, Uber, Lyft will also buy fleets of them. At the moment, when you rent a car from them, you leave it parked for 75% of the time, paying for it, but not using it. Why not instead just book a robo-taxi from the same Hertz, Uber or Avis when you need it? But it's going to grow much bigger than that. How about an airport hotel buying a robo-taxi? It can pick up their own guests from a railway station or an airport, take them to their hotel, 
then take them in the morning and drop them off at the terminal for their flight. 24 hours a day, no human intervention at all. Obviously, they'll charge them for it. How about a pub owning their own robotaxi? Can operate normally as a robotaxi during the day, making them money. Then at night, it could pick up customers from their homes, drop them off at the pub, and then take them home again at closing time. What a great way to fill your pub. Maybe the first time you'll hire a robotaxi will be when you go to the pub in your own car, have several drinks too many, and decide not to risk driving home. You or the landlord will simply book a robotaxi to take you home safely and legally, and you can pick up your car in the morning. Will you then go back to using your own car next time, not be allowed to drink? Maybe next time your first choice will be to leave your car at home and use a robotaxi there and back. Or maybe you just get fed up with driving your own car in the daily commute, driving in traffic, being charged for driving in a congestion zone, then looking around for a parking space, then being charged for that parking, then having to walk from there to your work, probably in the rain. You might try a robotaxi. It arrives on time in the morning, drives you to work while you sit back reading, drops you off right outside your work, then it, or a different one, returns in the evening and takes you home. Nice. And what if it's also very much cheaper than public transport or using your own car? Maybe you'll start to use it every day. What about the kids? At the moment, you might have to take Jason and to judo and Bridget to ballet twice a week each, then pick them up twice a week each. Why not order a robotaxi? It will pick them up from home, drop them off safely, only to pick them up on time later and drop them home safely, all while you watch your football. If they want to visit friends, call the robotaxi again, it will pick them up, drop them off safely while you watch your golf. And suddenly you could find that your own car is spending 90% of its time parked, depreciating, deteriorating. At some point, you're going to look at the car in your drive and ask, why do I even own a car? A car could become a very expensive option, particularly for people in cities like London, with congestion zones, parking fees, no off-street parking, no off-street charging, getting broken into every night. It will be easier, cheaper, quicker, more convenient to simply book a robotaxi on your phone when you need it. Now what about longer distance? Let's say you and your family or you and a group of friends are going to visit Cornwall or Scotland for the weekend or a week. You could drive yourself there in your own car. You could spend eight hours behind the wheel and £120 on fuel. You could get a rubber taxi to the station and then use the train, but with rail tickets costing over £100 each single for a 400 mile trip, it's expensive. Or you could book a robotaxi for the whole trip. It can happily drive six or eight hours without a break, even if you can't. It will obviously stop on the way for your comfort breaks. It will still charge its 25p a mile no matter how far it's going. So a 400 mile trip could cost you as little as £100 for all five of you. That's cheaper than the train, cheaper than the plane, cheaper than using your own car. But it's what happens next that allows this to happen. The Rover taxi doesn't have to drive back home empty when it drops you off. It doesn't have a home. It can happily remain in Penzance or Glasgow for the next week or several months, picking up and dropping off passengers. Fully automated charging points will be everywhere, so the owner will just let the Rover taxi do its thing wherever it can get passengers. It really doesn't matter where it is. Then, when your friends or your family decide to go home, could well be the same robo taxi that takes you back, or not. Let's say you run a small business, internet business, making products that you sell. Currently, you might use DPS or FedEx or the like and pay for next day delivery. Now you could use a robo taxi for same day delivery. Make your product, call your customer, book a convenient robo taxi, and a 20 mile same day trip could cost just five pound. Even book one robo taxi and use it to deliver several parcels on a single 100-150 mile trip wherever it ends up for £25-30. 
suddenly looking attractive, isn't it? And these are just some of the uses for robo taxis. There are countless others. No wonder companies are dashing to perfect the first full self-driving robo taxi that can go absolutely anywhere. Car ownership could then become decidedly questionable. Why own a car that you're only going to use once or twice a week? Private car ownership and usage will drop off rapidly as robo taxis take over. Robo taxis will transform our lives. Hi, I'm Dave. This is World of Peace and thank you for watching our video. If you've enjoyed it, please subscribe and click the bell to catch future videos. It really helps.